السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear student of second secondary We are going to solve questions of Egyptian knowledge bank Chapter 3 Bonds and forms of, an, of molecules Let's start with the first part of our questions Types of chemical bonding In this part we will practice describing different types of chemical bonding Understand and the concept of valency and representing chemical bonds using Lowe's structures okay we have different questions today we have parts we will solve today 10 questions from this part of Egyptian knowledge bank okay let's start okay first question says that the valence shell of boron is the second electron shell and contains three electrons how many covalent bonds can boron form by sharing its electrons okay if we discuss the structure of boron as an element we have three electron in the valence shell okay and it is the second one okay so if we discuss the boron and we want to make the Lewis dot diagram for it or we want to know how many covalent bond to make that it will be make okay at first if we have this example for boron we have here three atoms of fluorine so the molecule formed here boron Try fluoride or boron fluoride okay so here we have three electrons in the outer valence shell so we will make three covalent bond okay so it will make three covalent bonds okay this structure indicates the instability of compound as make a resonance for the compound but at least we want to know how many bond it will form from this structure as example boron form what form three covalent bond okay so how many covalent bond can boron form by sharing of its electrons it form three bonds okay this is the first question I give you this drawing for illustrating how we can draw Lowe's dot diagram or Lowe's dot structure okay let's go to question number two okay question number two says that hydrogen has a single electron in its valence shell how many covalent bond can it form I think it's easy here we have the structure of helium hydrogen and helium followed do okay troll as it contain two valence electrons they have a small outer shell so it will have one or single covalent bond it will form one bond or it has a single covalent bond here the structure of one hydrogen atom and the other hydrogen atom the line represented what here a pair of electrons if we make dot like this or straight line between the two hydrogen bond we mentioned that we have here a single covalent bond inside the hydrogen molecule okay what is the difference between doubt rule and octet rule octet means it in the Roman language and do it mean two in the also in the Roman language okay so we have do it here as they have only two electrons in the outermost energy level or in the valence shell okay so here we have the structure of what of hydrogen will form one covalent bond okay let's go to question number three okay question number three says that 
the valence shell of oxygen is the second electron shell and contains six electrons so oxygen is electronegative element as it has the ability to gain electrons how many covalent bond can oxygen form okay it need to gain two electrons so it will make the structure here have six electrons each one okay I will give you more than drawing for each element in our questions for remembering that we need to make the dot notation or lowest dot structure okay here oxygen make a double bond here so it will make a two covalent bond it will make a two covalent bond in the oxygen as it has what it has two electrons needed to complete the valence shell in the structure or two reaches to octet structure in its behavior and become stable at end okay so let's go to question number four okay question number four says that the valence shell of carbon is the second electron shell and contains four electrons how many covalent bonds can carbon form as it has four electrons for shell in the outer here we have the drawing the dot diagram for what for carbon carbon contains four electrons in the outer and surrounds by four hydrogen atoms here so it will have four bonds or four covalent bonds or tetravalent electrons or te or tetravalent bond okay to form this kind of bond inside the molecule here as it make a sharing for these electrons to form the tetravalent bond okay let's go to question number five okay question number five says that which of the following pairs of atoms are unlikely unlikely to form covalent bond okay we have the first group here we have pairs of atoms the first one neon and argon okay the second one nitrogen and oxygen third one sulfur and chlorine fourth one here number d carbon and fluorine and the last one here we have boron and hydrogen do you think all of them form a covalent bond no one of them unlikely to form a covalent bond or not form bond at all as it's inert or inactive element in nature so we have here the right answer will be what the first one neon and argon neon and argon are the noble gas or inert gas they are the nearest element to be unformed any kind of bond as they are completely inactive okay let's go to question number six okay question number six says that which of the following statement about chemical bonding is false okay I put it in a definite color to remember that we have false not right okay which of the following statement about chemical bonding is false we have the first one in covalent bonding electrons are shared between atoms okay it's right the second one here molecular compounds can only contain covalent or ionic bonding never both okay do you think it's wrong okay another one I in ionic bonding electrons are transferred between atoms forming ions I think it's right okay the fourth one D here chemical bonding involves electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged particles okay do you think what about it and the last one here in metallic bonding a sea of delocalization 
or delocalized electron is formed okay what do you think about the answer here what is wrong about false of the bond okay we have here the right answer will be molecular compound can only contain covalent or ionic bond never both okay it's a wrong about this knowledge this statement is wrong as we have can form ionic or covalent as we said in last session can we send the ionic bond into covalent yes sometimes when dissolving the ionic compound it will like table salt it will make dissociation or breaking the ion bond and form kind of bond between what between the solvent as water molecules okay let's going to question number seven okay question number seven says that how many electrons does an atom of strontium lose when forming the ionic compound SRI2 okay when we are looking to strontium here it well notes that we have here the chemical formula SRI2 okay so strontium here has two valence electrons and I iodine has one valence electron so we they will make exchange here so how many electrons does atom of strontium lose to form the ionic bond here it will lose two electrons that giving it to the two hydro two iodine atoms here we have the two electrons each one giving to what uh, to the iodine atoms here okay if we make electronic configuration for strontium and iodine here we have two electrons in the outer shell outer valence shell and iodine have seven electrons so it's monovalent and need to gain one electron so it will share two atoms of iodine or giving the two electrons to two atoms of iodine and how many electrons two electrons of iodine two electrons of strontium sorry can make what can make the ionic bond forming strontium i2 okay let's go into question number eight okay question number eight says that how many atoms of bromine are usually needed to form an ionic compound with a single atom of aluminium okay we have the aluminium is a metal and the bromine is non metal so aluminium lose three electron from its outer valence shell and bromine need only one electron as it is monovalent non metal nonovalent Mo non metal monovalent so it will make the reaction between what between three bromine atoms here as aluminium lose three electrons so three atoms of bromine needed three electrons that lost by aluminium so if we looking at the structure here we have here the lowest dot diagram okay we have the loses electron it will be al right above it plus three and the bromine here we have three atoms of bromine each one needed one electron here as it surrounds by seven valence electron so if we mention that we have a bonded and non-bonded electrons in the lowest dot diagram do you think here we have what is the number after making the lowest dot diagram what do you think about the number of unpaired electron or unbonded electrons and number of paired 
electrons or bonded bare electrons so if we have here three atoms of bromine okay please count try to draw every question and try to count every question to reach the number right without any mistakes okay the first one here we have three atoms of bromine so we have here six electrons and we can mention pair okay instead of the number of electrons we will said we have a pair of electrons so each atom of bromine has three pairs of unbonded what electrons so three times three equal nine okay we have nine unbared or unbonded pairs of electrons this is the first one and second one here we want to know the number of bonded pairs of electrons if we have three electrons in aluminium and three electrons in each boron atom so we have three pairs of bonded what three bonded pairs of electrons three bonded pairs of electrons so we have nine pairs of unbonded electrons and three pairs of bonded electrons i think it's easy question okay at the end we have here bromine negative one bromine negative one bromine negative one so it's an electronic structure at the end or dot notation at the end after what after making an ionic bond so i make training i said to you i will make training for how to write or how to draw that dot notation diagram for laos and we must remember every question we have to do this to make the counting right okay so the right answer will be three atoms here of what of bromine can make a an ionic bond with aluminium okay let's go into question number nine we have here in question number nine laos structure for a molecular compound of potassium and sulfur we have here potassium two atoms of potassium by losing two each one losing one electron and here is sulfur okay as shown below sulfur take two electrons to complete its outer valence shell and here and right we have negative two on it how can you tell this compound is ionically bonded how can you tell us this is ionically bonded okay we say that each potassium atom loses one electron and the sulfur atom gain the two electrons of each what of each potassium so we have choices here the first one ionic compounds always contain atoms in a two to one ratio second one here the atoms of sharing electrons to obtain full outer shell but have not become ions do you think what number c sulfur atoms can only form ionic bond number d the atoms have either lost or gained electrons to become ions and obtain full outer shell and the last one here we have the atoms are surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons what do you think about the answer here okay so the right answer will be how can you tell that this compound is ionically bonded the atoms have either lost or gained the electrons to become ions and obtain full outer shell okay so to reach what to reach the octet shape or octet rule of diagram okay it's an easy question we have here the diagrams that showing the formation of ionic bond okay let's go into question number 10 okay question number 10 says that which of the following is the correct laus structure for fluoride ion okay let's see the drawing here 
we have fullerene F8 and surrounded by plus okay at first we have plus it's wrong and here we have what this one without any sign also wrong why we need the fluoride ion so we have three draws for the negative ion the first one we mentioned after putting the sign we have to reach the it or octet though it means that we have two electrons in the outer or octet we have eight electrons in this case of fluorine we have or fluoride ion we must have eight electrons so without any thinking the right answer will be the last one here we have here eight electrons and negative sign brackets surrounding what surrounding fluoride ion so the last one here is the right answer in our questions today okay we reach to the end of this group of questions okay i hope you enjoy this part of questions of egyptian knowledge bank please try to study hard our questions and try to mention if you have any problem in solving please write it below the video and i hope you enjoy our questions today we will continue the second part of these questions okay keep in touch and study hard for this term okay goodbye